Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, those of you here with us live in the auditorium, plus those who are viewing it live on the internet, we welcome one and all. Welcome to the UAW GM Center for Human Resources in Detroit, Michigan, widely known as the CHR for short. I'm Ken Bean, communications manager for this organization. Just so you know, just real briefly, who you are, who we are, rather, uh, the, the CHR is the national headquarters for the partnership between the UAW and General Motors. Some of our main programs include quality, training, and health and safety. In fact, safety is our overriding priority. That's why, as a result, our plants, UAW represented General Motors plants in the United States, are the safest in the automotive sector worldwide. We're very proud of that. In addition, we're not only the benchmark for safety uh, in the automotive sector, really we're second to none throughout industry, and it's because of our, our commitment. Now, that's why we want to start out every meeting in this way. In the very, very unlikely event of severe weather, it's nice outside, but in the very unlikely event of se severe weather, here's what you do. First, you will hear an alarm. And again, we take this very seriously, and I hope you will too. You'll hear an alarm followed by an announcement. We'll proceed very, very quietly and calmly out the rear doors where you came in on this side, and for those of you on this side of the audience, there's rear doors right there too. Through the auditorium uh, lobby where you came in, out through the glass doors, and again, this is in case of severe weather, we're gonna head down the stairs into the parking garage where you will be greeted by a security guard who will direct you to the shelter area of that parking garage. Again, that's in case of severe weather, and we'll wait there quietly and calmly until we hear the weather has passed. In the very, also very unlikely case of fire, the directions are similar up to a point. You'll hear an alarm, an announcement, very quietly, very calmly, very quickly, we'll exit through the same doors. If you're on this side of the auditorium, that side of the room, the rear doors where you likely entered, if you are on this side of the auditorium, through the rear doors just out there, proceed out through the auditorium lobby. Instead of going downstairs, obviously, this is in case of a fire, we're heading outside. There's a large grassy area right outside. We will congregate there, and we will wait for an all clear. Any questions? Well, I hope everybody has a very safe evening. We're very, very serious about safety. We're also very serious about opening our doors to uh, the Riverfront Conservancy. We're very glad to be hosting this meeting, and with that, I'm very proud to turn it over to Faye Alexander Nelson. Thank you very much. Have a great meeting. Well, thank you so much, Ken, and good evening to you all. It is so wonderful to see you here and to be here to share all of the exciting things that have happened on the riverfront, some of our plans, you'll, some of which you'll hear for the very first time, but we're just so pleased to be here and to celebrate our riverfront. We think it's so important to remain connected with our community and we try to do so in a variety of ways from our annual meeting that we uh, put together to present to you. Also by way of our website and Facebook, our e-newsletter, all the ways in which we think it's so important to, uh, to be able to share with you what's happening on your Detroit Riverfront. But let me begin by um, acknowledging a couple of individuals that it's so important for me to begin acknowledging. It's always so important, first and foremost, for me to acknowledge my bosses, the individuals that I report to. I report to a 44-member board of directors, uh, and they're all great, they're all great. We have a few uh, here this evening, uh, Penny Baylor and Nancy Darga and El Evelyn Johnston and John Stroh. And if you would just please stand up and we just absolutely wanna give them a round of applause. They are so important to the development of our riverfront. 
They are absolutely amazing. They provide so much advice and guidance and vision and support. So I just want to thank you, each and every one of you, so very much for uh, being here this evening. We also have a number of other individuals that have provided a tremendous amount of support to the organization. Uh, we have Pat Cole, who is here. Pat serves on our public art committee. We've got Robert Davis, who is really is a past board member, remains an amazing friend as he uh, works is working with us hand in hand. He represents MDOT as we continue our development on the riverfront. We also have representatives from our public sector, uh, Dustin Campbell, who's representing um, Commissioner Alicia Bell. There's Dale Scrace, who's the mayor of Gross Point. Uh, Tom Wywoody, who you will hear from, from in a moment or two, and also a very dear friend who was really very early on, I would say one of our early visionaries with regard to the development of the riverfront, the faith and the vision with regard to the riverfront, and that's Harriet Saperstein. So if you could all stand and please accept a round of applause as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for all of your wonderful support. So we've got a lot of, we've got a great evening prepared for you. Um, I'd like to, uh, we've got wonderful volunteers. We'll acknowledge them a little bit later, but they're amazing and they're here to support and answer your questions. We've got a ton of Conservancy staff members that are here as well. And so we are all here uh, to uh, share with you what we believe to be a, a, a wonderful evening. So let me begin first and foremost by thanking now uh, the UAW Center for Human Resources for hosting this great, great facility. We have, every time we pick up the phone and ask the UAW GM to support us in a variety of ways, from charrettes to committee meetings to annual meetings, they're always here, they're always available. They are always very much supporting us. So I'd like to thank the UAW GM, certainly Ken Bean. Thank you so much, Ken. You are amazing. Ken provides a lot of support for us on our communications and community outreach meeting, committee rather. So thank you so much, UAW GM. And I'd like to give them a round of applause as well. You know, you find that you can't do, we can't do this job by ourselves in the conservancy. Uh, we have been extraordinarily successful, and it's wonderful to be the face of the development of the riverfront, but I have to tell you, but for our public and our private partners who have really been key to the success of our development of the riverfront, we wouldn't even be here today celebrating all of what uh, you will hear. So it's, it's, it's the private sector, it's entities like the UAW GM that have been tremendously supportive. And, and have provided so much in terms of the development of the riverfront. This evening will be an informative and enlightening one as we provide you with our annual update on the progress being made along the riverfront and our plans for the future since the last time that we met. Now this is something new for me, so my team has uh, not really pulled me kicking and screaming, but uh, I'm here now because we're doing some cool stuff with technology. We are streaming the meeting, as you heard, from Ken live over the internet. So in addition to you folks with us tonight, we have people at home and people at work and probably some of them on their smartphones too, all watching these presentations. Everyone, whether you are here in the audience or watching remotely, are encouraged to answer uh, or to submit your questions for our Q&A session, which will take place right after the presentations. Those of you in the audience tonight, uh, should have received note cards when you checked in. Uh, please feel free to write down your questions and pass the note cards to the end of your rows where our volunteers will pick them up in about five minutes or so. We'll pick them up again towards the end of the presentations just in case there are additional questions that you want to ask and we want to do everything that we can to answer all of your questions this evening. Uh, those of you who are watching remotely can tweet your questions at any time during the presentations. Of course, those of you with us in the audience tonight, you can feel, t um, you can feel free to tweet as well. So this is going to be totally cool. So now, what we are talking about this evening, what are we going to be focusing on? And that is what this year has looked like. It's been an amazing year. You would be amazed at all of the actions and the activity that has taken place on the riverfront from 
programs to construction to really strategic planning in terms of the future as far as the future of the organization is concerned. That coupled with all types of, of ways in which we've been working to raise funds in order to sustain not only our development efforts but this riverfront uh, is just a snapshot of what's been happening. We'll provide again the progress not only on all of these topics but specifically what's happening from a development standpoint on the east as well as um, the West Riverfront. And the Dequinder cut, there's a lot of interest that we've been, expressions of interest that we've been receiving on an ongoing basis as far as what's happening on the Dequinder cut. So we thought tonight, in addition to our presentation, that we'd ask our friend Tom Wywoody, who is truly the guru of Greenways, to come and share with us the exciting plans as far as the Dequinder cut the extension that's planned, what's happening also in the neighborhoods uh, with regard to um, his involvement. And, and Tom is the Greenways Initiative Director with the Community Foundation for Southeast Michigan. So I can assure you, I've heard his presentation, it is going to be absolutely amazing, and you will, which you will totally enjoy. So before I begin with the first presenter, I always have to just do a little bit of a step back so that we can just remind you or refresh you or for those who are not familiar with who we are, just a little bit of information as far as the conservancy is concerned. As you, um, I'm sure, are aware, we are a nonprofit organization with a mission of bringing access, connecting the community to the riverfront and as importantly serving as a catalyst for economic development. We really represent as an organization, and it's something that I alluded to earlier, one of the most exceptional, and I repeat that, exceptional public-private partnerships. This is a project we hear oftentimes about as, um, as a community how we don't work together too well. Suburbs, city, city, suburbs. But this is an example of how the community has come together, the public sector, the private sector. Uh, the city of Detroit, foundations, corporations, uh, the broad-based public sector, the community at large, all focused on the importance of the restoration as well as the revitalization of the riverfront. This waterfront, even, even from a standpoint that we have yet to complete our development efforts, is already providing a significant quality of life for our community, that sense of pride. But as importantly, it provides a key director, if you will, a key stake in the ground for the future of our great city, certainly our region. We're the permanent stewards of the public space. What that means is we're responsible for all the operations, all the maintenance, all the programming, and as importantly, raising all of the dollars to support all components of this project. We're also the permanent stewards of the Dequinder Cut as well. So all of that, the operations, maintenance, programming, security, that's part of the Conservancy's portfolio as well. Our vision, five and a half miles looking to develop as far west as the Ambassador Bridge, just east of the Belle Isle Bridge, which picks up Gabriel Richard Park. To date, we have three miles along the riverfront completed. This summer, we were so excited in that we celebrated at a groundbreaking, which represents the final phase of construction that will allow us to complete the East Riverfront. East Riverfront, three and a half of those five and a half miles East Riverfront from the Joe to just east of the Belle Isle Bridge. So it's an exciting, um, it's exciting time from a development standpoint. It's an exciting time from a progress standpoint. There's just so much that we have to look forward to as far as our riverfront is concerned. So as I mentioned earlier, there's been all kinds of activities that have taken place throughout the year, from programming to construction to operations to fundraising and more. So I'd like to begin our evening with a presentation by Michelle Marine, who's the Director of Programs for the Detroit Riverfront Conservancy. Thank you. Thank you, Faye. Good evening. I'd like to provide you with a, with a brief overview of some of the summertime programming and events along the riverfront this year. We began the season with our first ever rain barrel workshop in April. More than 100 participants made rain barrels for home use, which will save nearly a half million gallons of water from flowing into our storm water treatment system. Our inaugural Detroit River Water Festival brought more than 750 students from Detroit and Windsor to the riverfront. 
Participants learned about water stewardship, took part in hands-on workshops, and just had a great time on our riverfront. Sponsors included DTE Energy Foundation, Cranbrook Institute of Science, the International Joint Commission, Detroit Wayne County Port Authority, and General Motors. More than 500 children and their families attended the Detroit River Days Fishing Fest, which was held at Millican State Park and Harbor. Participants enjoyed fishing instruction and arts and crafts, and some of the kids even caught fish, which was a real thrill for them. Sponsors included the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Presbyterian Villages, United Methodist Retirement Communities Center for Senior Independence, and the MDNR, as well as Comerica Bank. Quicken Loans employees and family and friends were treated to a sneak peek of our Detroit River Days Festival. More than 1,000 guests attended. The event allowed Quicken employees to be introduced to the riverfront and served as a reward for, for a successful fundraising campaign. Employees purchased bricks, benches, and pavers, and had other creative opportunities to raise money for the Conservancy. The employees raised more than $100,000 for the Conservancy, and that figure was then matched by the company. Additionally, Rock Ventures donated $1 million to the Conservancy. Our three-day Detroit River Days Festival was held in June. More than 150,000 people attended the event. The festival featured top national acts such as Boys to Men, The Whispers, Kansas, and more than 50 local acts on several stages. The festival's popular River Days 5K Walk and Run returned as well, with more than 700 runners participating in the event. River Days also featured strolling entertainers such as jugglers, aerialists, living statues, and fire throwers. The Michigan DNR provided a kickoff to summer at River Days with hands-on activities like archery, fishing and camping demonstrations, wildlife exhibits, and kayaking tutorials. The Conservancy created Riviere 28, a group for young and active professionals as a way to engage them and introduce them to the riverfront. The group held three events this summer, drawing more than 900 participants. Light Up the Riverfront was held at Millican State Park in June. Guests enjoyed a pig and turkey roast, bonfires, as well as live music. Soiree on the Greenway was held along the Dequinder Cut in July and featured the creation of a live graffiti mural, musical entertainment, and a local food truck. Sunday Fun Day, as pictured here, offered yoga, lawn games, and brunch at Gabriel Richard Park in August. Our literacy program, Reading and Rhythm on the Riverfront, served more than 2,500 children and their families and distributed more than 2,000 free books this summer. Celebrity readers like First Lady Yvette Bing, L. Brooks Patterson, and Conservancy board member Cindy Paskey, shown here, read books to the children. The event also featured arts and crafts, rides on the Cullen family carousel, book giveaways, and entertainment. A new lending library sponsored by the General Motors Foundation also allowed children to check books out and read them along the riverfront. The Conservancy now offers seven-day-a-week programming throughout the summer, such as our Riverfront Canine Club, sponsored by Canine 25, Family Fit Wellness Program, an Herbal Walk and Talk Program, our DMC River Walkers, which is a group of more than 1,000 seniors who walk the riverfront and the Dequinder Cut, Motown in Motion Family and Exercise Support Group, Tai Chi along the riverfront, our Blue Pigs Band lunchtime concerts, and finally, Yoga on the Riverfront. We can see quite a few walks and runs for various causes and charities. We had more than 25 walks and runs on the Riverwalk and the Dequinder Cut just this year. Our ongoing public art program receives quite a bit of attention as well. The goal of the pro program is to make art accessible to guests visiting our public spaces. Right now we have four installations along the Riverwalk that are on long-term loan to us. The Dequinder Cut is building a name for itself as a great place to enjoy examples of urban art. The Conservancy again partnered with the Detroit Institute of Arts this year for its popular Inside Out program. Earlier this year, we celebrated the official opening of our Riverfront Play Park, which was built by volunteers last fall. 
Since its opening, the park has become a favorite among families visiting Rivard Plaza. In addition to the Conservancy's events and programming, our neighbors along the riverfront offer a large variety of things to see and do as well. Rockin' on the Riverfront, the popular Friday night concert series sponsored by General Motors returned this summer. New at the Port Authority this year was Navy Week. Visitors to this event along the riverfront could tour military vessels, listen to military bands, and engage in a variety of interactive displays and simulators. The War of 1812 celebration, which coincided with Navy Week, offered guests the chance to learn more about this historical bicentennial event and featured battle reenactments and costumed interpreters. Tour Detroit brought more than 5,000 cyclists to the streets of Detroit this summer. Conservancy volunteers staffed a brake station on Belle Isle for the event. As you can imagine, with a variety of seven-day-a-week programming, the Conservancy cannot do it alone. We are thrilled to have a dedicated corps of more than 200 volunteers assisting us in our efforts. A few of them are here this evening, and I'd like to give them just a brief round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. We all appreciate you so very much. We're always recruiting for new volunteers, so if any of you have an interest in joining our great team, please see my colleague Phil Rivera afterward. We make it a really fun, easy way to volunteer, so we do hope you'll consider joining us. Don't forget that the popular Free Press Talmer Bank Marathon returns this Sunday, October 21st, with more than 20,000 runners participating this year. Key stakeholders from throughout the riverfront footprint also enjoyed a very busy year as well. Thousands of visitors enjoyed riverfront boat tours this year on Diamond Jack boat cruises, the Infinity, the Ovation, and the Detroit Princess. The Port Authority, which opened in 2011, welcomed six cruise ship dockings this year, bringing more than 1,600 passengers to Detroit as a port of call. The Port Authority also provides dockings for tall ships and Great Lakes vessels to visit Detroit. Wheelhouse Detroit provided its customers with bike rentals, sales, service, and themed tours during a very busy summer season. Crowds continued to visit Millican State Park, Michigan's first urban state park. It offers trails, fishing, boat slips, a lighthouse, wildlife observation areas, and boasts a wetland for storm water treatment. The Shane Park 6,000 seat outdoor riverfront amphitheater enjoyed a busy season as well. Eastern Market, the venerable Detroit institution connected to the riverfront by the DeQuinder Cut drew 30 to 40,000 weekend shoppers during its busy May to September season. The newly renovated Roberts Riverwalk Hotel saw an increase in overnight accommodations and room rentals this year. Additionally, its popular jazz series on Wednesday and Saturday evenings drew large crowds. In fact, you're welcome to enjoy tonight's jazz performance following our meeting. More than 2,000 students passed through the halls of the University Prep Science and Math High School each day. It features a curriculum based on science, technology, engineering, and math. Some of you may remember that we held last year's community meeting at the school. I'm sure many of you here are anxious for an update on what is happening with our east and west riverfront developments. Here to talk about the east riverfront is my colleague, John Cox. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. It's truly an honor to be here tonight. Before telling you how we are completing the design and construction of the East River Walk and bringing the process, as we say, full circle, I would like to introduce and thank our project team. Our sincere and thanks and appreciate respect go to our partner, MDOT, and who is facilitating the project delivery and use of federal funds through the Federal Highway Administration, our design team, who is led by the Detroit offices of Manning Smith, our construction manager, general contractor, is Detroit-based tools construction contracting company. I don't know. Um, end State, the East River for Walk, as has been mentioned before, is going to be three and a half miles in length. That begins on the west at Joe Lewis Arena and travels east to Gabriel Rochard Park. 
Completion of the vision of the East Riverfront will unfold in four phases. Contract one, which is the Red Star at Mount Elliott, and thank you. It's not showing up very well. The, um, the Red Star at Mount Elliott Park and Plaza, then the Yellow Stars, and there's several of those. One's at the Civic Center all the way on your left, Watermark and, and Wholesome, which are more towards the middle, and Frame Shane Park, and then Gabriel Richard Park, which is a construction, uh, which is all the way on the right-hand side of the screen. Construction for two, contract 2A is scheduled to commence next year, 2014. Contract B is a lonely green star in the U.S. Coast Guard parcel in the middle of the site and is involved in a land swap as we speak. Contract 3 is a purple star, which is also by itself, but it represents the 43-acre Uniroyal site. The north-south south line in this slide is our friendly friends at the Quindercut Greenway reaching up to Eastern Market, which as Faye mentioned, Tom will address. This is an amazing photograph. This past summer, some of you were able to join us for a groundbreaking ceremony at Mount Elliott with the support from the full breadth of our public officials and community. Yes, that is the senator and the governor and the mayor working side by side with conservancy leaderships and other community leaders to, as we say, make it happen here. Excuse me, I need to get dressed for this next section. We're proud we're starting construction. Construction began on Mount Elliott Park and Pavilion, the third iconic urban plaza along the riverfront. The first, as you recall, is the familiar blue wall structure and tent at uh, Rivard Plaza, and then there's a similar sister plaza at, at Gabriel Shard. Featuring a dynamic interactive water experience with over 30 robust devices and a, an authentic green Great Lakes schooner has been designed to be number one, safe, Number two, universally accessible to those of all ages and without physical challenges. Number three, authentic to the contextual context of its Great Lakes site. And of course, be really cool with lots of water and a couple water cannons for some of those younger guys. Construction is scheduled to be completed in 2014, and the project is currently registered for LEED certification with the U.S. Green Buildings Council, which for some of, which most of you are aware of is a green sustainability. LEED is an acronym for standing for leadership in energy and environmental design. Um, some of the, the audience gets to experience the construction every day. For the remainder of you, this blue and red hardware on the photograph is a sign of progress on the site as we speak. Mount Elliott is one opportunity to create a community destination with a sense of place. The Civic Center, earlier this year, the responsibility for the operations and maintenance of the Civic Center area transitioned to the Detroit Riverfront Conservancy. Concurrently, security cameras and call boxes were installed between the Port Authority and the Joe Lewis Arena. All security devices along the riverfront are monitored 24-7 and the, at the Conservancy's River Guard Command Center, which has upgraded it, which was, was upgraded in late 2011 with new recording and monitor equipment. It's all new flat screens. It's really nice. Signage and wayfinding will be added along the Civic Center to communicate our pride and, and, our, and identity with our greatest natural resource, the Detroit River. I believe that during the first design phase, this, this, this was done during the time that Bugs, Ear, Bugs Life was being designed by Pixar because they called this sign on the left the Bugs Ear. The Civic Center is an opportunity to make a connection to our vibrant city center and, of course, Woodward Avenue. Recalling the two yellow stars on the, near the center of the earlier map on the east and west ends of Shane, there are two sites posed for real estate development each with a publicly accessible waterfront. Improvements on these precious areas include lighting, security devices, and our familiar stainless steel guardrail with all the riverfront improvements, such as, as and as with all of riverfront improvements, these parcels will include lush and colorful landscaping. Shane East and Shane West are an opportunity to create a quiet place for freighter watching and relaxing.
as my bike riding friends from the villages remind me, the lack of public parking or even a pathway connecting the river at Gabriel Rochard Park to Jefferson Avenue has inhibited the full use of the investment made to the made near the bridge of Bell, to Belle Isle with the, one of the plazas and the pavilions. We're going to fix that. In the second phase of construction, which you're now figuring out is called 2A, an environmentally friendly parking area will be constructed near Jefferson, and a 20-foot wide concrete path with donor pavers will, pa will wind its way down to the river. The me meditative labyrinth near the MacArthur Bridge will be enhanced with soft perimeter lighting to remind us year-round uh, uh, to, to, of the peace within and the tranquility of the flowing river water. These improvements to Rick Gabriel Rochard are an opportunity to connect and engage the communities along the East Jefferson Corridor with the Detroit River. This slide is, represents the Uniroyal site. The 43-acre Uniroyal site has been a focal point of industrial abuses along the international waterfront for almost for much of the 20th century. As you can see in the photograph, and as some of you undoubtedly noticed, Cleanup is underway for the western third of the site and is anticipated to continue eastward. The Conservancy is in discussions with the development team to integrate the real estate development with the real riverfront experience and the adjoining communities. Improving Reuna Royals represents two important opportunities for all of us. First, it is the largest gap existing on the three and a half miles riverfront. And second, it is a statement of what Detroit really is. It will be a statement of what Detroit really is. Before turning the statement over the podium over to Karen, my colleague Karen Slaughter de Perry, one last comment. You've heard about two, two environmental sustainable project elements, the LEED certification at Mount Elliott and the parking area at Gabriel Shards. The Detroit Riverfront Conservancy constructs the way it does because sustainable bill. Sustainable design and construction communicates our commitment to environmental sustainability. Karen? Uh, thank you, John. But, you know, for our Q&A session, if you have some questions, if you can start passing them down to this end, and, and we have volunteers who will be coming to pick them up, or if you just wave them in the air or something, they'll come get them. So as you have the questions, because we want to make sure that they're out there for the Q&A section, okay? Well, okay, let me get started, because I know we're trying to get out of here. Okay, thank you, John. <laughs> I actually have the pleasure of informing you that we're beginning to improve the West Riverfront. As you can see on this map, when we talk about the two miles of the West Riverfront, we mean from the Joe Louis Arena um, on the far east and on the west is Riverside Park. We purchased the former Free Press site and we will be making it clean, safe, and accessible next year. I mean, with all the fishing that goes on on that site, we need to make some improvements as soon as possible. As you can see in this map, we'll add three walkways from the street down to the river walk. Now, this is the current conditions. As you can see, the railing is not to code. It lacks lighting, it lacks security, and it has sinkholes on the path. So, next spring, we will want to take down the fencing so that everybody can use that portion of the river walk and add the connections to the street, improve the path, add lights and security cameras, benches and trash receptacles. So, more to come once we get through this winter season. Now I need to switch gears though. <clears throat> because Faye always mentions the Conservancy operates and maintains the public space to spur on economic development. The public-private partnership, which is the cornerstone of our existence, allows for these dynamic property improvements. The Conservancy has engaged a consultant to capture the economic impact of the riverfront. The study will quantify all of the construction, the jobs that have been created, the overall investment in the area, and that study will be complete by the end of this year. 
So on that note, I will highlight a few of the new riverfront development projects that have successfully started to revitalize this area. I will start with Presbyterian Villages, which is the project that you passed on your way in this e evening. It's the conversion of the Park Davis Lab into assisted living um, residence. This will add more people to the riverfront that can call this place home. The next speaker, Tom Wywoody, will give you the details, a lot about the details in the next few moments. Kobo, which will be next, is undergoing a $270 million renovation and expansion. As you see here, they're opening up the arena that will be turned into a ballroom with an outdoor patio. And here, they're putting the steel in for the atrium. The new soaring atrium along the river will offer breathtaking views of the riverfront and the river walk. It is scheduled to be completed by Auto Show next year. The former Globe Building, which is in this picture, will undergo an amazing transformation by the Michigan DNR. It will become the new focal point for the first urban state park in Michigan, which is the Millican State Park and Harbor. The building will be transformed into a discovery and adventure center, featuring a climbing wall, archery range. This is the one I don't understand how they're gonna do it, but I gotta go there to see it. Kayak simulators, hands-on exhibits, and a science learning center. This new attraction will open the fall of 2013. And lastly, another project that is com contributing to the vibrancy of the riverfront is, of course, the Dequinder Cut that connects the riverfront to Easter Market. The Dequinder Cut will see an expansion as well. But at this time, I have to turn the microphone over to Tom Wywoody from the Community Foundation of Southeastern Michigan to tell you more about that project. Tom? Uh, thank you, Karen, and thank all of you. Let me echo uh, Faye's welcome and expression of appreciation. The real measure of success for projects like this uh, is the community engagement, the community involvement, and the fact that we're here with a, a nearly full auditorium uh, reflects that engagement, that commitment that you have. So thank you so much for everything that you're doing for the Riverfront and, of course, for the city of Detroit. Uh, when Faye invited me to, to uh, talk to, uh, this evening, uh, uh, she suggested that it might be interesting to discuss how the, uh, the benefits that we've uh, talked about, that Faye and Karen and John have talked about and, and Michelle have talked about, uh, how those benefits are accruing into the neighborhood, what's actually happening to the community. And, uh, and I'm happy to do that, and we'll see a few slides uh, reflecting that, some of which uh, Karen has already touched on, um, but uh, of course, whenever you start with these projects and getting back to the, uh, my own experience, uh, easily the most commonly asked question of me is, what's happening with the Dequinder Cut? When will the Dequinder Cut continue expand? What, uh, what is the ne next plan for development? Well, uh, let me offer, uh, let me offer a little uh, story about the Dequinder Cut and where we stand but before I do, Faye mentioned that she had already heard this presentation, uh, which is true, except she didn't hear this part because this part actually just happened yesterday. Um, uh, late last week, I was at a meeting in Iowa, uh, at an event in Iowa, and I walked into a conversation that involved uh, a gentleman from Miami, uh, a gentleman from Baltimore, a woman from uh, Pittsburgh, and a gentleman from Cleveland. I had not been in the conversation. I had not introduced any subject to the conversation. I, I joined the conversation. These are friends of mine. And they were talking about the Dequinder Cut. They were talking about uh, the transformative effect that investments like that can have on a community. I thought, of course, that was rather remarkable. People from all over the country were talking about a project uh, without my uh, assistance. Um, uh, and then um, uh, that experience was reaffirmed yesterday. I was in Chicago yesterday. I was at a meeting with a group of folks who were talking about creative, uh, the, the Federal Transportation Bill passed a couple of months ago, 
and uh, a, uh, an invited group of folks uh, from around the Great Lakes states uh, met in Chicago to talk about creative investments for uh, the use of federal transportation dollars. And um, uh, the example that they used, and again, this was not my, uh, my introduction to the conversation, was the DeQuinder Cut. These are people from Chicago and Columbus and Indianapolis and Milwaukee who are talking about our project and how we think about transformation in our community. So uh, we're very excited that your project, your project, has got national, international attention. So let me tell you about the DeQuinder Cut. You see, you see on the, uh, the screen a map of the DeQuinder Cut. This map actually ref uh, was um, part of the first draft, the original draft of the DeQuinder Cut. You can see the, the riverfront to the uh, right of the screen, the Gratiot to the left of the screen, and of course that reflects the, the current extent of it. For those of you who don't know, the reason why it ended at Gratiot in 2009 was because that was all the property that the city controlled. The city did not control the property north of Gratiot. Over the last six years, there has been conversation with the, the, uh, the owner of that property. It's a private short line railroad. And uh, several years ago, an agreement was struck uh, to acquire that property. And um, about a month ago, the city exercised its option to purchase that property. So the next step in the, the uh, development of the DeQuinder Cut will be the uh, stretch of uh, property from, uh, from Gratiot to Mack with an exit ramp at uh, Wilkins that will allow you to end up in downtown Eastern Market, if you will. Um, which we, we, of course, think uh, will uh, have a profound effect on its use. It adds about three quarters of a mile of uh, development. Uh, to the to the and the Quinder Cut, which means that you're uh, around two miles, a little bit more than two miles, and it adds immediate access, direct access to the Eastern Market. Um, can we show the uh, the before? There we go. This is what the uh, de, what's referred to as the Quinder Cut North looks like right now. Um, uh, we are uh, hopeful that the the project will be uh, look like the previous picture. Uh, by uh, uh, certainly by 2014, and if we're really optimistic, by uh, this time uh, next year. Now, uh, many of you may have heard uh, or read that in uh, June, the city of Detroit received a $10 million Tiger Grant. Um, can we have the, there we go. Um, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with that acronym, Tiger stands for Transportation Investment Generates Economic Recovery. Again, reflecting uh, Karen's comments about the economic benefits of these kinds of projects. The uh, Tiger Grant, the $10 million tri Tiger Grant, which uh, has to be matched, and that match money has been identified, um, will fund a, uh, essentially four steps, four components to the projects that you see on the, the uh, screen. It will fund the construction of the DeQuinder Cut North. It will fund some infrastructure improvements in the downtown eastern market. It will fund the connection from the midtown area, the Wayne State DIA area, on down to the eastern market. And it will fund an on-street pathway that will get you to Hamtramck. So the end result of the Tiger Grant, when all of those projects are completed, will be that you can go from Wayne State uh, visit uh, a, a display at the DIA, ride your bike down. If you're tired, stop at uh, the Detroit Medical Center and uh, get a, a checkup. Uh, continue on to the Eastern Market, uh, grab some lunch, take your lunch down to the down to the Quinder Cut, ride down to the riverfront, and enjoy the ambiance of uh, the, the many uh, ter terrific projects that. Uh, that were described to you earlier, all by bike or walking, a distance of approximately eight miles. Um, so we're very excited about this. The city of Detroit is very fortunate to have received that grant. Um, the the, uh, the Quinder Cut is one of a number of greenways projects that are being developed throughout the, the, um, throughout the city. And many of you, I suspect, have participated in one of the planning processes 
that developed the next Greenway strategy for, in fact, the east side. You see on the uh, screen a, uh, uh, a photo of the east side Greenways plan, more commonly known as Green. Uh, that was released approximately a year ago. Uh, that planning process included engagement of uh, um, one of the most active public engagement processes that we've actually ever seen uh, in throughout any of the city um, planning processes. Uh, and I suspect that many of you participated in that planning process. Uh, there were uh, more than a dozen um, planning uh, charrettes or engagements. There were uh, over a thousand people participated in the, in the process. I think we've got a slide of uh, some people who were working dutifully. You folks told us where to go. You were the ones who identified the key routes, the, the key corridors, and this next image will, tell, uh, will show um, the routes that you chose. Do we have a copy of that? Uh, there we go. Um, that is the, the uh, East Side Greenways plan. As you see from that Greenways plan, it includes some uh, opportunity to continue the, the riverfront uh, work uh, further east uh, so that we finally get to our neighbors to the east, uh, gro the gross points. I think probably more important, though, is the fact that it actually brings the neighborhoods uh, the, the various neighborhoods uh, near east and far east down to the river. You can see some uh, very important connections there. And it's uh, incumbent upon us, uh, both the, the philanthropic community and the, uh, the, the community leadership, it's incumbent upon us to figure out how to make this Greenways plan happen. And we're working on that. There have already been identified both projects and funding for a couple components of that plan. This story isn't just about greenways, though. It's about the, the community. It's about an east side investment strategy. It's about building on the success that uh, we've talked about for the first uh, few minutes of this program. And uh, Karen touched on uh, one of those investments, that being the, the Presbyterian Villages of Michigan project, which, again, you passed uh, um, just outside the door here. Uh, that's one of the uh, many capital investments that have been made throughout the region, uh, throughout the, the east side. Uh, others include uh, significant investments to um, uh, restore the vitality of the eastern market. I trust that all of you have visited the eastern market. If you haven't, you need to go there and, and enjoy it. Uh, the uh, Gleaners is uh, redeveloping its campus. There has been a significant uh, investment in the Riverview Hospital to make sure that that institution remains alive. Uh, of course, uh, not far from here, the uh, University Prep uh, High School. Uh, uh, the, these significant uh, capital investments ensure that the, uh, ensure the vitality of these neighborhoods and build on the success that was described uh, earlier. Um, but, as you well know, uh, it isn't just building on those, uh, those capital projects. It, is, it takes place where you live and how your community lives. And because of the success that Faye and others have described, because of the success of uh, the investments that you've heard about, the mayor uh, uh, several months ago when the uh, HUD announced the city of Detroit's latest tranche of neighborhood stabilization program money, more, com more commonly referred to as NSP. This was the third round of NSP dollars. Uh, the, the mayor included the east side, that area roughly proximate to the riverfront, They're actually fairly close to where we are now, uh, as a, a target area for uh, housing revitalization, for blight removal, for uh, community improvement. So you're going to see over the next several years, in addition to the large capital investment, you're going to see some significant investments in your neighborhoods that will, of course, allow you to uh, both further enjoy your neighborhood and obviously enjoy the, the riverfront as well. Um, it's critically important uh, that in addition to the physical investments, the investments on the ground, that we ensure that the vitality in the community exists. And so over the last several years, the Community Foundation and, and our philanthropic partners have invested heavily in organizations like uh, the East Jefferson Quarter Collaborative, which obviously has as a, its focus 
the uh, Jefferson, uh, the, the corridor along Jefferson, the Villages Community Development Corporation. We've invested in uh, the Invest Detroit or Downtown Detroit Partnership. We have uh, supported the, the um, SAFE program and the CLEAN program. Um, uh, all of that ensures that uh, these communities remain vibrant, vital communities and, and neighborhoods in which you, you can continue to live, work, and play uh, with the same level of enthusiasm that you've shown for many years to come. This slide happens to be a bit self-serving. It, uh, it obviously reflects how the Community Foundation has invested in the East Side. It's important to remember that we are one of many partners, uh, many philanthropic partners and many public partners. And I think uh, most importantly for our conversation this evening, we are honored to be a partner with our good friends at the Detroit Riverfront Conservancy. And it's a real pr privilege for me to be here and to provide that support. Thank you very much. Now, Faye. I would like to ask you to give Tom Wywoody another round of applause, please. You know, when I talk about this, speak about this public-private partnership, it is organizations like the Community Foundation for Southeast Michigan, it's individuals like Tom Wywoody that have the passion and the support and the vision for the revitalization of our community. So we're so very appreciative and so grateful for the interest of the Community Foundation and for all of what they are doing to enhance our community. So thank you so very much. I'd like to uh, take an opportunity now to thank my team, uh, Michelle, John, Karen, and Tom for all of those great presentations. Another round of applause for you guys. They're so cool. I tell you, you know, they politely told me, just sit down, we'll handle this, we'll give you what you're supposed to do, and we'll, we'll get this together. And they have, they've arranged all of, uh, they put together this entire presentation, and so I'm, I'm very appreciative of all of what they've done. They've worked very, very hard over many weeks to bring this information to you, so thank you again. And, and I'd like to specially acknowledge the team leader, the individual that served as the point in bringing um, all of this wonderful presentation, connecting all the dots, uh, and that's Bianca Williams, and she's somewhere. Come on, Bianca. She doesn't want to come out, but we're going we're gonna, to, she's got to come out. She feels more comfortable in front of a computer. But this is Bianca, so let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Bianca's amazing, and I'd like to uh, certainly thank her. I'd like to also acknowledge our wonderful men and women who are our, um, our volunteers. They, as Michelle mentioned, we have over 200 volunteers now. And they are amazing. They are in our offices. They're on the riverfront. They are so passionate about our city and about supporting the efforts of the development of the riverfront. So I'd like to thank our volunteers. Please stand up. Please wave your hand. Please let's give them a round of applause. Thank you so much. You're there. Come on. There you go. They're amazing. We always have to thank our volunteers. And then finally, I'd like to um, acknowledge uh, my security and operations team. You probably saw them as you were coming in. They work 24-7, literally, to keep our riverfront safe and accessible and beautiful. And I'd like to uh, make sure that you know how hard they work and to acknowledge the team leader, our director of operations and security, Mac McCracken. Mac, wave your hand. There you go. So, now, on that note, it is time for Q&A. And for that, I'd like to turn the microphone over to our moderator, Penny Baylor. As Penny is coming up to the, uh, uh, to the stage, it's important to know that Penny is uh, an amazing person. She is, first and foremost, a very dear friend. She's a member of the Detroit Riverfront Conservancy Board. Uh, but in her day job, she is the executive director of one of our most dynamic nonprofits, and that's City Year of Detroit. I am so pleased and uh, honored to introduce my friend, Detroit Riverfront Conservancy board member and executive director of the City of Detroit, Penny Baylor. Penny. Hi, everybody. Isn't this fun? 
I have to say what a joy and a thrill and a privilege it's been for me to serve on this board since, it, since the Riverwalk and the Riverfront idea was conceived and founded. And I always tell Faye and everyone else, when I come to the meetings, I can't quit smiling. I mean, they show all these gorgeous slides and tell about the construction projects. And I live right on Joliet and Lafayette Park for 35, 37 years, whatever. And to actually see it transform. Remember when those cement silos came down? Oh my goodness, it's like this is really happening. It, it is just such a thrilling thing. So uh, this is very exciting tonight. And look at the people all the way up to the top. I think we should give ourselves a hand for just being here. Thank you, guys. So uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to kind of just explain how we're going to do this. We have questions and answers. Thank you, guys, who've written uh, questions and you've passed them to the end of the aisles. If you want to write more questions, you may do so. Please pass them immediately to the end of the aisles, and someone will, one of our great volunteers will come and pick them up, and we'll try to get to all of them. Uh, if we don't get to all of them, we will post them on our website. It will consolidate in case, you know, some people may ask the same question from three different people, so we'll consolidate those. And also, we have our tweets. Tweets are coming in, and some of them are tweeted here. Uh, and if you are, want to tweet from the audience, you can do that. And if you're watching online and you want to tweet, just go for it. And we'll try to get as many of them covered tonight as we can. So I will um, read the question, and I hope I can read them properly. And uh, we have our two experts are going to sit here, Faye, of course, and Tom. And you couldn't have two people more knowledgeable about this, this whole process and this wonderful thing that's happening right here in our neighborhood. So does everybody understand what we're doing? And we're going to start right now. Um, first, the first question I have here, what is being done, oh, this is a good one, what is being done to attract more young people to live in the River District and to enjoy the riverfront investment? That's a great question. Can you hear? Can you hear, Faye? How about now? Move it closer. Testing? All right. That's a great question. We are, we've worked this year um, to establish a brand new initiative called Riviere 28. Riviere 28's focus is on reaching out to our young leaders and getting them more engaged as far as the um, support of the riverfront, the development of the riverfront, serving as ambassadors of the riverfront, and um, hopefully one day serving as being, becoming one of our donors to the riverfront. So the group was established in early, the early part of this year, and we had several different events to introduce these young people to the riverfront. And the, they were made up of, they represented backgrounds from finance to law to medicine, to um, just general business coming together to learn more about, the, uh, about this development effort. So we had three different initiatives uh, from introducing them to the Milligan State Park, uh, the Dequinder Cut, as well as Gabriel Richard Park. So we are engaging now over 700 young professionals right now, introducing them to the riverfront and moving forward with involving them um, looking at potential board opportunities, opportunities to um, um, ask uh, to ass have them assist us from a committee membership perspective, all for the purpose of engaging our, our young professionals uh, with regard to the development of the riverfront. So we're very optimistic. We had a great first year, where, as a matter of fact, in the process of planning 2013, and I'd like to uh, acknowledge Julie Howe, who's one of our Twitter experts here, who has led the effort in the development, uh, the creation of our Riviera 28 program. So we're real optimistic. We're very excited about uh, identifying this new demographic. And we're very looking forward to engaging and expanding our, our connection with our uh, young professionals in the community. Great, thank you, Faye. You're welcome. This is awesome, uh, and we have uh, we've seen some of the slides and pictures at our board meetings about 
One event had 750 young people there. It was just young adults. It yes. was just incredible. I was stunned. It was wonderful. That was our pig and turkey roast. Yes. <laughs> OK, here's, an, here's a great question. What happens when the five and a half mile construction of the riverfront is complete? Well, you know, our vision is not only to develop the public space on the Detroit Riverfront, connecting the community to the waterfront, but as importantly, serving as a catalyst for economic development. So we're right now looking at east-west, that five and a half mile stretch, but we're also beginning to look at north of the river as well. And it's our vision uh, in partnership with our public and private partners that one day this riverfront will become a very vibrant place even more so in, in that we look to see the future. The future includes not only the continued development, I think, of the public space piece, um, but we also look to connect the public space, in, uh, space piece into the neighborhoods, into the community. We also look to see more development from a residential as well as a retail perspective uh, on, um, in the, within the Riverfront District. We're very excited about some of the future plans that we're all working together on, such as uh, Tom's amazing Greenway program, and all of what that will do in terms of connecting the community, uh, not only to the river, but to all these wonderful, um, iconic um, uh, institutions and entities like the Eastern Market, ways in which we can bring our community together, bring, uh, identify more opportunities from a walkability standpoint. So, Saying all that to say that we're not just going to be developing east and west. We're going to continue to work with our public as well as our private partners to identify ways to continue to push the needle forward as far as the development of the creation of a vibrant riverfront community that connects with the broader communities from downtown to midtown to our neighborhoods. And if I can build, oops. Excuse me. If I can build on that, it, uh, the connection piece that uh, Faye so eloquently eloquently emphasized, um, the uh, uh, it, it is not uncommon for people to ask uh, when these programs end, like this, whether it's the five and a half miles or whether it's greenways generally. And the fact is, they never end. And the reason they never end actually goes back to the previous question, which is that uh, studies over and over show that uh, young people, people who, the young professionals, people who are um, interested in uh, communities are interested in that, that uh, urban dynamic. They're interested in a vital and vibrant community where they can actually feel a part of and, and enjoy the amenities that those communities have to offer. And uh, just by way of illustration, although it isn't quite uh, specific to the riverfront, uh, in 2009, the city of Detroit had zero bike lanes, none, not any. Uh, now, there are approximately 60 miles of bike lanes with uh, uh, plans to put another 20 miles in next year. Um, and um, should those bike lanes be introduced, the city of Detroit will have more bike lanes than any other city in the state. Um, while bike lanes are uh, absolutely... Um, uh, I think bike lanes are illustrative of the kind of connections that uh, Faye is talking about. They connect communities, they connect people, and in this case, all bike lanes, all roads lead to the riverfront. That's awesome. And by the way, that question was tweeted. So we we're excited about that. And by the way, I feel a little bit like uh, something we might have seen on television last night. I'm Candy Crowley, and these are just <laughs> very great. Uh, <laughs> they're much, they're so, really very uh, impressive. So who might I be, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Run for president, Faye. You'd be yeah. awesome. Uh, OK, here's another one. Uh, and this is from someone very special in the audience, the Reverend Nicholas Hood Sr., former city council member for decades serving Detroit. And thank you for submitting this question. Thank you for being here. Nick says, will the river walk pass on the river side or the 6th Street side to reach the former Free Press property? Our plans to reach the former Free Press property would be, our plans are to go as far west as uh, just west of the Ambassador Bridge with the, our, with our emphasis primarily on the river side portion of our, of our development. So we look to, and I hope I'm answering your question. You're saying the former free press printing plant? What I really want to know is, are you going to pass on the river side on the former free press printing plant? 
the Riverfront Apartments? Of the Free Press property. Yeah, that's what I thought. So that's a good question that I don't have an answer to, sir, at this point in time. We would love to. What we're looking at right now, as Karen indicated, was to take the property that we are controlling, which is the, the, the site where the former Free Press printing plant was located. We're going to make that site, which is about 25, 26 acres, um, accessible and safe for our community. And so we've got some early development that we have planned that we're going to launch the early part of next year. But then we want to take a step back and begin to re-review our vision that we set forth and shared with the community a number of years ago as far as what the West Riverfront plan would look like, going from uh, Cobo Hall all the way west to uh, the Ambassador Bridge. So with regard to the Riverfront apartments, there is an opportunity, there may be an opportunity for us to go on the water side. It just all depends. Uh, with the previous owner years ago, there was not really the appetite for us to develop um, uh, to develop on the water side. We're certainly looking at uh, developing on the, uh, extending the riverfront or the river walk, if you will, on the north side. And hopefully, uh, depending upon the property ownership, um, their interest, and our ability to raise adequate funds, we could take a serious look at developing on the water side. We have great experience in our development in that regard uh, with regard to residential, the residential properties on the riverfront. Harbortown is a perfect example of how we have developed the river walk uh, within the Harbortown marina footprint, and it's worked very well. So we'll see. We'll see how this all goes. We're very interested, though, in, in focusing on uh, what the West Riverfront might look like. We'll certainly have community meetings to share our ideas and continue to receive, receive the community's ideas with regard to the West Riverfront. We'll have to look at timing and, you know, that ult, you know, always, always funding where we, how we will identify the funds to support our development on the West. But I'm firmly convinced that the East, our success uh, on the East will serve as an excellent leverage uh, to move forward on the West from a development and funding standpoint. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank you, Faye. And uh, I'll just say, if we can get down those cement silos, this should be a piece of cake. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Penny. Uh, what is the current status and future plans for two things? The West River Walk, just past the Riverfront Apartments, and you, you sort of addressed that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the Broadhead Armory, just east of the Belle Isle Bridge. Um, as I mentioned, with the uh, West Riverfront, we're, we're beginning to take a real focused strategic look at the West Riverfront uh, from a timing standpoint, from a timeline standpoint, from a, um, from a scope standpoint, from a funding standpoint. Um, we're doing some early work on the West Riverfront, but, but our priority, make no mistake, remains the East. We want to continue, we have to continue the East. And the East includes, by the way, and what you didn't see on the visual, and I really have to make sure I take this opportunity, it includes us continuing to raise more dollars to support our development efforts. As I mentioned before, our responsibility includes not only construction, and, uh, and we are the permanent perpetual stewards of this space, so forever we are responsible for for maintaining this beautiful riverfront space. But as importantly, as critical, we have to raise the dollars in order to sustain our development efforts. So to that extent, we are working to continue to raise those monies to, um, to have an adequate endowment, to establish an adequate endowment to support the perpetual maintenance costs associated with uh, this project. So without getting into tons of numbers and things of that sort, I would encourage you that when you are thinking about your year in giving and you think about what organization or nonprofit you can support, please think about us. We, you know, when you, when you arrive at that riverfront and when you sit and you enjoy that peace and that beautiful space and the wonderful events that you've heard about, and all of what you're hearing about as far as the future of our development efforts, remember there are no subsidies that we receive and this is all as a result of raising dollars to support this effort. So there is no contribution that is too small. And so I have to say that to you. Now that being said, we, our footprint 
is, is five and a half miles. And so going east of, the, of Gabriel Richard Park right now is not in our immediate plans, and that would include the Broadhead Armory. Uh, some of what Tom has shared, and Tom, you may want to comment on that, is the Greenways plan that extends almost as far east as, um, as Gross Point would pick up that armory footprint. But, um, but it's so important for us to be able to demonstrate success and to be able to show you better than we can tell you what we can do. And so that's why it's very important for us to stay focused on the East Riverfront, to complete the construction, to present you with a contiguous three and a half miles of beautiful waterfront uh, while we're beginning to focus on moving west raising all the dollars and continuing to work with our public and private partners to entertain the conversation as far as uh, north-south and further east-west. But Tom, you may want to add to those well, comments. Well, let me, let me talk uh, specifically, give you a, an incomplete answer to the Broadhead Armory. Um, uh, recently, uh, a couple of the uh, community organizations that I mentioned uh, in my presentation received uh, or were awarded, I'm not sure if the money has exchanged hands yet, were awarded a grant from a, uh, a, a historic source to do an analysis of, of the, the potential for the Broadhead Armory, whether, whether it was structurally sound and assuming that it is, what could be done and what would it take to do that. Um, I've, I don't know the timing of that grant, uh, nor do I know uh, when it is expected to be completed. But you can expect that there will be an analysis and presumably, uh, because those organizations have been very good in engaging the public, uh, you can expect that uh, there will be some public conversation about uh, the opportunities that the Broadhead Armory uh, uh, provides. So uh, stay tuned. And we're very interested in the entire Riverfront District. And so as we continue our efforts to develop, we are continuing to focus north as well and looking at the surrounding areas, surrounding community. And we'll do whatever we can do and we'll continue to enhance all of our efforts working with our partners such as Community Foundation and others to, to begin spanning out this development and, um, and, and creating a much better place and space for our community. Thank you. Uh, here's another tweet. Uh, how is the Conservancy connected with the East Jefferson Corridor? We're very connected with the East Jefferson Corridor organization. I've got uh, Karen Dupere here. I'm going to ask her to help me a bit with this question, uh, the answer to this question. We have a board position, and we're, we're very engaged um, with the organization in a variety of ways. Security is one. Uh, one main way I know that we're working in collaboration, sharing a lot of our best practices um, and information that we have to share. But Karen, I'm going to ask you to, to finish the answer to this question. Yes, the, there are two committees. One is the East Jefferson, the EJCC, and GBA. Both of those um, committees, I, I represent the Conservancy. We bring all best practices and information whenever there's um, a need to do any supportive um, letter writing, committee work, um, all of the above, the Conservancy is present on, on both of those committees. We're very aware that the riverfront is uh, very heavily used by uh, the East Jefferson committee, uh, community. And so we want to do, again, everything that we can to make sure that is welcoming and that we're connecting and that we're providing as much and sharing as much information as possible to support the continued development of the East Jefferson community. Thank you. Uh, this is about the Uniroyal site. How is the asbestos at the Uniroyal site being removed to not harm the residents who live in the area? That's a great question, and those great questions I shoot right over to my team members. <laughs> I'm going to ask John Cox to, uh, uh, to help and assist in answering that question. Thanks, Ben. But I'm going to bounce this one and get another place. The, the cleanup of the Union Royal site currently underway is being mm -hmm. undertaken by a consortium of the DTE, and there's an excellent um, PDF that they have on their webs, on the, the webs on the internet that I find by just Googling Uniroyal uh, cleanup and DTE, and it pops up. The DTE is responsible for this. They are 
and it's being managed by the DEGC and I believe the, the environmental bodies of both the city and the state. In other words, the Conservancy is not directly involved in it, so we can't specifically answer that question. But I can, can tell you just from a personal basis, the quality of the individuals involved in, this, in the cleanup, both from the management and the cleanup, and are, are, are such a, of such a nature that they aren't going to make mistakes. And from what I understand, they're spending a lot more money than they intended to. So I think that if the person who asked that question, um, we, can, we can connect that individual to a representative from the DEGC that can more specifically respond to the cleanup. It's an excellent question, and we'd be more than happy to facilitate that connection. Um, if I could take a moment, uh, Penny, mm -hmm. we have another board member that, that's arrived. Ken Coleman, Ken is here. And we want to recognize Ken. Stand up, stand who, up. Uh, stand up, Ken. We want to give you a round of applause. We, uh, I, I so appreciate my board members who, uh, who come out and support us. And also, Senator Coleman Young is here. And I want to acknowledge the senator as well. He was here, and he may have left. But we want to thank Senator Coleman Young for, uh, for attending as well. So thanks, thank Penny. Thank you. Another Twitter question. Uh, what efforts? are in place to share information and collaborate with the surrounding development efforts nearby? Well, I'm going to answer that question myself. <laughs> well, we're working really hard in a variety of ways to share the activities that are taking place in the Riverfront District. Um, by way of Facebook, social media, we've, um, we've worked very hard to share information with our Facebook friends. We also have update, updated information on our website. We have a, a quarterly newsletter uh, that, we have, uh, that we are sending out and we're looking to, um, we are looking at uh, providing more frequent updates um, on a monthly basis. There's so much activity that's taking place. So, um, so through the, the variety of ways we are, we're going to be utilizing um, to share information on what's happening in the Riverfront District, um, to share it with the community. Um, and uh, if I may follow up, uh, Penny, the, uh, there recently a, a new website that deals with all things biking and walking in Southeast Michigan was developed. It's housed at the Community Foundation. It's called Mode Shift. Uh, the, the address is wearemodeshift.org. Um, and uh, it, it includes stories about everything. Of course, we are uh, a regional foundation, so we serve uh, communities outside the city. So it obviously has stories of uh, biking, walking, um, non-motorized transportation stories from uh, throughout the region. And it always includes stories about the Riverfront Conservancy and the fine work that's going on here. So if you were to uh, start uh, following Mode Shift, you would uh, both learn about the biking, walking activities, and you certainly would learn about the wonderful work of the Riverfront Conservancy. Thank you so much, Tom. And also, uh, we have our annual report that's a way in which we can, we share information as well. Next year, Penny, you know this, believe it or not, we are celebrating our 10th year. And it's going to be, awesome. I know, it's going <laughs> to be so exciting. There will be many, thank you. There's just going to be a lot of exciting activities that are being planned to celebrate 10 years in business. And one of the, um, what we're really looking forward to is taking you back in time to when the riverfront, where the riverfront was before we launched our efforts. So you're going to be, um, you'll see some all kinds of cool and exciting before after, before and after picks, as well as where we see the development moving from a future standpoint. So as Tom said, stay tuned. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and I'll just add, the last weekend, uh, I think, or 10 days ago, there was the press conference on the, at the Millican State Park about Us. the Globe Building. And then yes. everyone, including the governor, got on their bicycles and rode up to the Eastern Market, where there was a presentation about the Eastern Market. So that was another way of collaborating with nearby developments, which was part of the question. Absolutely. Here's a Twitter. Uh, how, can you how can this development model or parts of the model be replicated elsewhere in the city? I think it is big. Um, the, 
as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's the public-private partnership that has really supported, uh, that is the strong support for our success uh, to date on the riverfront. Again, with City of Detroit, foundations, corporations, individuals, broad-based community coming together to support the restoration and revitalization of the riverfront. And we're seeing uh, this collaborative approach happening in Midtown, downtown. We're seeing it through the Greenways initiatives that are currently in play. We're seeing it through the, uh, the M1 Rail initiative. So, uh, you know, there's so many different ways. I think that we are recognizing more so every day that together there is so much that we can do as a community. And the riverfront, I think, stands as, a, as quite a shining example of what we can do if we come together. I would, I would certainly echo the uh, public-private pi partnership. I would also invite you to dream. The, the projects that, uh, that the Riverfront Conservancy has embraced and all of the things that you've heard uh, tonight um, and that the future opportunities are things that I would suggest uh, 10, 15, 20 years ago for those of us who were raised in Detroit and remember this city back in the 50s and 60s. Um, uh, it, it was not something that we thought was possible, and, um, and we're proving that it is. We're proving that this can be done, which means that it's incumbent upon you to think about what the future of your city should look like, and then invite your organizational leadership and your community leadership to realize that vision. So uh, it's, it's all about uh, dreaming and then realizing that dream. I love that. One of my favorite expressions is, where is it written that we can't do this? And it's really not. It's not written that we can't. And I have two more questions, and then we're going to go to some fun stuff, uh, more fun stuff. And this one is for Tom. Uh, who is matching the Tiger Grant? The, uh, uh, in my presentation, I mentioned that the Tiger Grant was a, a $10 million grant. The scope of work that was uh, used to illustrate the, the Tiger Project is actually a $24 million project. So obviously, we needed to find uh, an additional $14 million. The uh, Community Foundation has uh, millions of dollars, several million dollars uh, of uh, money in that uh, project. A number of our other philanthropic partners do as well. And in addition to that, there are some infrastructure improvements uh, both in Midtown and in the uh, Eastern Market area that count as match. So the, the $14 million that uh, is needed for match is coming generally speaking, although not entirely, coming generally speaking from the philanthropic community uh, with uh, a, uh, some exception being some uh, public money that qualifies as match. That's great. And of course, tonight, we're all thinking about the Tigers, but that was a question about the Tiger Grant. Go Land. Tigers. <laughs> uh, and then, Faye, I did not write this question, but I love it because it fits your description in times of dreaming. Dream what could happen. How soon will the plans reach Fort Wayne? I did not write that. I Penny love wrote that. that. Penny wrote that. That's what you call scope creep, thinking. right, Karen? <laughs> I know. I didn't write it. Well, you know, I, I think it is important, as Tom said, to dream. And it's amazing. Um, I, I have to you know, just share a story with you. When I first joined the Conservancy and I visited with many individuals uh, throughout the community, and I had these really pretty pictures, people, I can't tell you how many people told me this would never happen. It will never happen. The community won't work together, we don't work together, we're not team players, and on and on. And it was always, this is, it, it just won't happen. So here we are today, launching the next phase of construction, which will allow us to have three and a half miles of fabulous riverfront. And we, you know, we, we ran through quite a bit of this presentation because we really wanted to get you to the Q&A, but we're going to be not only developing east of Rivard, but we're also going to be developing west as well. So we're all that civic center area. We're going to be repairing the broken concrete, putting in new lights, fresh landscaping. I mean, it's just going to be awesome. And who would have thought we could do this? We can do this. So when we hear, I hear Fort Wayne. Thank you very much, Penny. <laughs> we think about, we're beginning to think about, you know what? Why not dream? Why not dream beyond the Ambassador Bridge? And we can figure out a way. Is that right? 
because I have to say to you, at the end of the day, it's really personal for me. I'm a Detroiter, I'm a native Detroiter, and this is really the dream that I've always had as far as making a difference in my community. And so when I visit the waterfront from time to time, and I say that because I'm always in meetings, always trying to work to get this project, if it's not construction, it's raising money, it's, it's you know, uh, working with my team on all the programming. But when I have an opportunity to come down and visit the waterfront myself, I am always amazed that everyone I see, they smile. They're so happy and so proud of this waterfront. So Penny tells me I have to dream, so I will dream. <laughs> and uh, don't be too surprised if one day you hear a lot of discussion about the waterfront going west, maybe even as far as Fort Wayne. I love it. Well, you know, there's a new bridge going in down there, too. Okay, so we're <laughs> I'm staying away from that one. <laughs> that exciting? This is so exciting. Uh, I have to say about Fort Wayne, one of the reasons that when we founded the Riverfront Conservancy, the idea was to make Detroit a destination, an international destination where people would say, oh, you've got to go to Detroit to see that river walk and the rest of the great city, too. But Fort Wayne is a, is a linchpin of that, because if you know Fort Wayne, you know it, it's a historic site, of course, going back to the 1700s, but also it has an Indian burial ground there. It has the Tuskegee Airmen Museum that my late husband, Kermit, had something to do with getting going there. Uh, it's just a magical place that isn't often celebrated. And by, by getting there, someday, we can help to make that happen, and that adds to the destination feature of Detroit. Don't you think that'd be cool? I think it'd be very cool, very cool. Okay, now we're gonna have some prizes. Uh, so we have a big bin that that's, there's some uh, tickets in, prize tickets, where are they? It's coming, coming out, oh. Oh, there is one. Cool. Speak and it shall happen, I love it. I'd like to uh, take a moment to introduce to you Phil Beer. Phil, <laughs> Phil manages all of our volunteers, oh, our volunteer you. program. He's an amazing dude. Thank you, Phil. Okay, so Faye, are you going to draw them out? It's going to be, it's gonna be Tom. Gonna, there, all right. All right, hand Whoa. it to me. Well, one just popped we out. Have five, we have five wonderful prizes presented by our sponsors, so uh, we're very excited about them. I'm going to tell you what they are, but let me, but first let me tell what this one is. This prize, here, you can read the name. This prize, our first prize is one night stay at the Marriott Detroit Hotel, as well as a gift card for dinner at Andiamo Detroit Riverfront. And the winner is? Juan Davis. Where's Juan? Oh, you must be present to win. That's right. Is You're Juan not here? Down? Hello, going once. All right, Juan we'll go to another twice. one. Sorry, Juan. Sorry, Juan. And the winner is? All right, we'll try this again. If not, I'll take it. How's that? Chris Clark? Chris, All right. right there. I love it. OK. Chris Clark. All right, the next prize. Marriott, and what was the? was Marriott? The first was the Marriott. The Marriott Detroit Hotel and a gift card for dinner at Andiamo Detroit Restaurant. Okay. Two Congratulations. Seats. That's cool. Next one. Dinner at Joe Muir Seafood Whoa, in Detroit. That is so cool. If you haven't been there, you should go to Joe Muir's. But this is a prize. So let's see who gets it. I like this part of the program. <laughs> Maxine Martin. Maxine, is she here? Maxine, oh, I missed her. Oh, okay. that's too bad. Sorry, Maxine. Next one. The Honorable Rashida Tlaib. Rashida here? Ah! <laughs> Is she up there? I didn't stand know up, you were Rashida. Here. State Representative. Well, you stand up, State Representative Rashida Tlaib. Yeah. There she is. Amazing. Wonderful support. Well, congratulations. That was the dinner at Joe Muir. Woo. woo. Dinner at Joe Muir. She wants to give it to someone? All right, let me. Do I reach back in? All right. Thank you, Rashida. Smart. 
Okay, a gift from Rashida to Ruth Olson. Right, right, right there. <laughs> Very nice. Dinner and Joe Mears. All right, this is getting good. The next prize is a BMW, no. Uh, the next <laughs> Oh, I don't think so, No, this here. is a UAW, no, I can't say that. <laughs> I have a Ford, by the way. Uh, our next prize is a one-night stay at the Roberts Riverwalk Hotel and dinner at Andrews on the river. Oh, wow. This is really nice. Okay. Yeah, that, I do, too. All right. That's a gorgeous hotel. If you haven't seen it, you should go there. It's just Fabulous. beautiful. Joan Bell. Joan? Right there. All right. Congratula congratulations. One Fabulous. night at the Roberts Riverwalk and dinner at Andrews. Very nice. Next, oh, this is fun. Next is a complimentary Segway tour from Segways to You and a Detroit Riverfront Conservancy gift pack. The winner is. What did I do? Okay, this is fun. Patricia Hansard. Yes, right there, Patricia. Congratulations. All right. You're going to segue your way up and down the Riverwalk. That's cool. And last, the fifth prize. We have a gift certificate for a guided bike tour for two from Wheelhouse Detroit and a Detroit Riverfront Conservancy gift pack. And the winner is a guided bike tour. That's cool. <laughs> We're a good team here. Charles Ware. Charles, you Are must you here, be Charles? present to win. Sorry, Charles. Okay, thank you, Charles. Betty Steeler. Betty. No? Are you here? Is she here? Oh, way up Hey, there. Betty, congratulations. All right, congratulations. All right. I just have to thank all of you for being here, and we have one more little thing for you. But first, I just want to urge you, how many people, raise your hand if you have a brick at the Riverwalk. All right. Now, the rest of you, you need a brick at the Riverwalk. And I'm telling you, it's such a thrill when you go there and you show people your brick, and then they get excited, and they buy a brick, and this is what helps to build the endowment that's going to, in perpetuity, take care of this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful experience for Detroit in world-class condition. It's going to be maintained by the Conservancy, so buy a brick. And now let's welcome back Faye, our wonderful CEO. Thank you so much. Let's give Penny another round of applause. Penny. All right. Well. This concludes our program. All right, so here's the deal. Um, this Saturday, uh, Taj Mu Beer Garden, it's a pop-up beer garden. It's going to be at Atwater Brewery. If you are so inclined, Saturday, 15% of the proceeds go to the Detroit Riverfront Conservancy. So stop by. Um, thank you so very much. We have coffee and dessert for those of you who would like to stay and chat with members of the Conservancy team. And winners, you can pick up your prizes out um, in the reception area, lobby area as well. Thank you so very much, and go Tigers!